Ever since I was a little kid and played games like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Battletoads, I have always enjoyed a good beat em up game. They're loads of fun, easy to jump into but hard to master, and they're also great games to play with a friend. The thing is, even now in 2020, these games are still as fun as they ever were before. The gameplay and their mechanics are still mostly the same, which speaks volumes on how good they have always been. But now the question is, what are some of the best beat em up games available for the Nintendo Switch? Well, there actually is quite a lot here, and we are going to go over the top 10 best beat em up games available on the Nintendo Switch as of 2020. Now, do remember that this is only my opinion, and yours may be completely different than mine. So if I do miss any of your favorite games, let me know in the comments below so we can all discover those games as well. With that said though, let's get right into the list. At number 10, I have Ninja Saviors, and unlike most beat em up style games where they have you playing on a 3D plane that you can move up and down in, instead the Ninja Saviors is just a bit different and has you entirely on a 2D plane moving left to right. That may seem odd, but it makes up for this by throwing a ton of enemies at you from either side, including a lot of environmental hazards, so you're always engrossed with a lot of action. You have an armor bar that acts as life and a battery charge which allows you to use specials, and by keeping track of these can be a matter of life or death. And there is a lot of moves in this game to deal with the onslaught of enemies, which could be another really good benefit of it just being in a 2D plane. I would have really appreciated more enemy variety though, but I will say this. I think the boss encounters are done very well in the Ninja Saviors, and what I think makes this game just so enjoyable. Wolverblade has one of the more interesting art styles on this list, and it immediately stands out for that reason alone. You'll either love it or you'll hate it, but beyond just the art style, there is much more to this game. It is an absolutely brutal and gory game where you dismember your foes. The combos aren't insane or anything, but you can use wolves once per level to destroy everything in your path, so you must choose when to use this very carefully, and if you build up enough rage meter, you can become a menacing threat to everything that stands in your way, speeding up the pace immensely. This meter does fill up over time gradually, but you can however build this meter up just a little bit faster by executing your foes, encouraging that brutality that I was speaking of before. This game is a really solid title and something you may end up enjoying. Ninja and Clash of Carrots is probably one of the weirdest beat em up games you'll ever find mixing a runner into the genre, and somehow it does so seamlessly. I never thought the two would combine, but somehow it does work here. It's a very colorful and charming game, there is plenty of challenge, and it's also extremely chaotic, but there is a method to the madness in Ninja Clash of Carrots. As you're running around, there will be waves of enemies thrown your way, and you must keep track of your position rather strategically, dodging incoming attacks while bashing your enemies, using dash attacks, and you even have your own projectile to throw. So I do know that this game looks really goofy, and frankly it is, as you chase down those who stole your carrots, but don't let that fool you, because there is a really good game here. Next up we have Full Metal Furies, which is actually quite a standout on this list because of how differently it plays than any of the other games, which can be both a good or bad thing, depending on who you ask. It's almost like a mix of a shoot 'em up game with a beat 'em up style. You are going to have to dodge plenty of projectiles, but you can get up close and personal as well. It's very odd, but it does work here. The story is also well written, which is an added bonus, and it does require a lot of teamwork. You can choose two different characters to play in solo, and switch your characters on the fly to target enemies' weaknesses. At times, they may be invincible to one character, so you must switch, which is where the teamwork comes in. This makes you constantly change up the playstyle, and it also makes for great cooperative gameplay that makes it just that much more engaging. Lastly, it has a lot of RPG mechanics to it, so there is a lot of depth here in how you want to play. So even though Full Metal Furies is a bit different than some of the other games on this list, I think what they made here works very well and something that's worth checking out. 
Streets of Red is a really interesting title because of how much inspiration it takes from other games within the same genre, or really even in pop culture. It wears its heart on its sleeves and you're going to play through a lot of stuff here that you're going to notice from other games, or even from cinema, whether that be from the Aliens franchise or Terminator, to the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, and really just a ton more. You're going to end up finding yourself very nostalgic playing through Streets of Red. The thing is, even though it does pay a lot of homage to its inspirations, it's also a lot of fun. I do think that the background scenery could have been a little bit better, but from a gameplay standpoint, I like this game a lot and it also has a risk reward mechanic that I think is really interesting. So you do get these coins throughout the level, and you can use these coins to pay for new skills at the end of each level. But that's not all they're used for because it's also how you get extra lives when you die. I think it makes for an interesting mechanic and that's exactly how I would explain Streets of Red. It's nostalgic, fun, and very interesting. Fight and Rage is a game that I think will surprise quite a few people because I don't think many people actually know about this game. And that really is a problem because it is a good game. It was only developed by one person, which makes it even more impressive, but it is a true love letter to old school games of the same genre. This is very evident from the pixelated art style, and it even tries to add scan lines that was in older technology. I personally think it's very visually pleasing, but it doesn't stop there either, because the combat is also a lot of fun with big combos, a parry system, and you can do plenty of juggles. You can choose one of three characters, all of which are very unique, whether you want to play fast paced with some chaos or a tank like Bruiser, you can absolutely do that. You can also use specials, though this should not be spammed or you will consume your own life, but this is a really fun game, and if you want to play a new game that feels like the golden age of beat em up games, then Fight and Rage is a great choice. Now if you just want to go old school and pick up some of the best beat em up games, from the golden age, then look no further than Capcom Beat'em Up Bundle. This is quite possibly the best bang for your buck as you not only get one game, but you get seven great games here, some of which are on consoles for the first time ever. In this bundle you get Final Fight, a staple for the genre, The King of Dragons, Captain Commando, Knights of the Round, Warriors of Fate, Armored Warriors, and Battle Circuit. There is a lot to play here, both online and offline, with a lot of variety. The thing is, these games still hold up incredibly well today, so don't let their age fool you. These are still really good games. For the next three games, I actually consider them to be the big three beat em up style games for the Nintendo Switch, or more or less the three must haves for any beat em up fan. And the first one up is River City Girls. This is an excellent beat em up game that I think is going to take a lot of people by surprise. Now, River City Girls is actually a spin off of the old Kunio Kun franchise, but instead, this time around, you are playing two girls in which are just trying to save their boyfriends. The story is pretty goofy, but for a beat em up game, I think it is enjoyable with the crazy girls and trying to figure out what happened. And then there's also this art style. It mixes this old school pixelized art style with just stunning colors. I love the way this game looks, it just pops off the screen, but most importantly, in how it plays. Right out of the gate, you can choose one of two characters, both of which plays very differently from one another. There is a dash in this game and you can unlock plenty of new moves as time goes on. I really enjoy this game a lot and I think it's a must have for any fan of the genre. Castle Crashers is easily one of the best beat em up games to ever be made and probably one of the reasons it continues to be so successful on every platform it releases on. The original did release 12 years ago in 2008 for the Xbox 360 and since then it's pretty much went to every platform. There are a few things that really stands out in this game though. The art style is very colorful and there is nothing else that looks quite like it. It's got a very charming sense of humor, there is an RPG like mechanic to it with its leveling up and all the different weapons and the mix of your classic beat em up combat with magic feels really good. 
Whether you want to play the Red Knight zapping enemies as if you're Raiden, or shooting hell from the sky with the Blue Knight, they're all different and a lot of fun to play. There's also plenty of extra characters to unlock, which is another reason that there's just so much replayability in Castle Crashers HD. If for whatever reason you still haven't tried this game out, do yourself a favor and go play Castle Crashers. And number one on this list goes to none other than Streets of Rage 4, the old school Sega beat em up. Beat em up fans probably know about this legendary franchise very well, considering the Streets of Rage franchise is widely considered to be one of the best of the genre to ever be made, and has inspired so many that has followed. You may have grown up as a Sega kid, or maybe you played it in the arcades, but you know how fun these games were. Sadly though, this franchise vanished into the sunset for decades, but it has finally returned in all of its glory, and it's better than ever. Anytime a franchise of this caliber comes back though, there is always going to be fans just a little concerned if it will be as good as it used to be. But in this case, Streets of Rage 4 easily is, and I can't stop playing this game. As for the mechanics, they are brilliantly done here. You have a typical punch button that you can throw some combos in while mixing in some throws, but you can also use a defensive special or even offensive. Though by using this, you will be consuming your own life bar, or actually potential damage. You can regain this by punching your life back up. However, if you get hit before so, then you lost all of that life, making the risk reward of specials very thought provoking. Streets of Rage 4 can be a very challenging game, though the combos are a lot of fun to pull off. Plenty of characters to play with as well that all has their own unique playstyle, and yes, one of those does have a run ability. They consistently throw new enemies at you and new weapons with new environmental hazards, and the bosses are brilliantly done. So not only did Sega bring back Streets of Rage 4, but I think they have made the best beat-em-up game I've played in a decade. It is that good, so go check it out. Anyways though, that's it for this video, but if I forgot to mention any of your favorite games, let me know in the comments below. That way we can all discover some new games together. With that said though, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Peace out.